I want to remind every Kenyan that God commands us to love and protect our neighbor, and that the safety and prosperity of our nation also depends on how you treat your neighbor. Your neighbor can be from any community, can worship differently from you, but it is they who will take you to hospital on a late night when an emergency strikes. They will run to your door in response to your cries of alarm. Your children will play with theirs regardless of their differences, of the differences adults have. I today once again urge all of you to be your brother's keeper. Every day, I will work to bring you closer to your dreams and to unite our beloved country. President Rukenyata speaking during uh, his swearing-in ceremony. Let's now, let me, let me go to Isaac Kalua. Uh, Daktari, you've had uh, Mzee Gitu's sentiments. Uh, I don't know, what is your take on that? He thinks there is no patriotism in Kenya today at all. I think let's, let's take it uh, with a lot of honor. They're getting someone like Mzee Githu to speak what he has done, I think it's a great honor. And I really salute people like Githu and many others who are doing tremendous job in this country. I, I want to first of all take us back to a le public lecture that was given recently by uh, a man that I have a lot of respect for, Mr. J.J. Wamwara. He was speaking at the University of, uh, at the Strathmore University. And he talked about liberal uh, democracy and populism, the global trend and uh, what is happening in Kenya today. Some of the things that are happening in our country have been manipulated into our minds. We are more optic. We have also become susceptible to a lot of manipulation by people who have a different agenda from that of the original uh, individual self that we should be having. I want to suggest to our youth, and especially our youth in this country, if we can start being driven by what we feel, what we are, than what we see. We are too much optical in what we see things. And it starts from our foundation as a country where we started from. You find that we judge the number of people who attend an event as opposed to the development agenda and the need that is driving us as a nation. When, for example, I speak about environmental matters, I do not need to consult. I have to do my homework to check what is good, to check what tree works well, what are the environmental impact uh, uh, issues that are around an issue, right. and create an opportunity that makes sense. When I make the motorbikes in Honda, I want someone to be able to take advantage and have the best product that we need to have. This, in my opinion, Ben, is what we need to drive. Our county system, County, county governments. Right. You find that a person in Ukambani, we have three problems. There will be water, there will be cost of life, mm -hmm. and the next thing is jobs you are looking for. All right. Let, let's, you go let's, to central part yes. of our country. Mm -hmm. Let me just finish this, uh, Ben. You go to a different part of the country, you find that they, their biggest problem is not jobs, it is market for their products. There is therefore the need to get the people from the central part of the region of our country to work with the people from a dry area like Ukambani to be able to deal with the challenges that they have. But instead, we have been driven, manipulated in a manner that we don't see issues in the way that we should be able to see. The county systems have made us to disintegrate into the counties without the national value like America would have so many states, but they all believe to be an American, and the, also the other continents of the world. This is what is lacking in our country, right. and we need to start. And, and, and I like the new education system that has now been introduced or is being introduced into the country by our honorable minister in charge. I think these are some of the things that we may have lacked before, right. but now we are moving towards towards achieving this. All right. Sheikh Lithome, 
let's let's seek to answer this question as we wind up what are some what is the solution how can this nation harness or cultivate that nationalism or patriotism back uh, one thing I have to say, it's sad to hear somebody like an elder like uh, Getwa Kahengeri speak with that bitterness. It's because we have a problem and he has seen it all. We have a problem and we need to look uh, for a solution for this country. And I think, number one, we need to deal with our negative ethnicity. It's not a mistake that we belong to different nations and communities in this country. It's God's plan. But even our constitution in the preamble states that we have to uh, recognize and live together, and actually the preamble says we have to talk, we, we should be talking about unity in diversity. Mm -hmm. We are diverse but one country. Two, our politics are based on tribalism. We need to deal with that also. So that when somebody is a leader, we stop seeing that person as a person who is advancing the interest of a certain community or a certain political leaning. We see this person as a national leader. Then the utterances, our leaders should be careful the way they talk. When you're a leader, you should be careful the way you talk. And I think this is going to be a long haul. It's not going to be a short-term thing. It's a long haul thing. We need to address it. If we don't address it and maybe hide our heads in the sun, we are going to face a very big problem in future. And we should begin with our education system. I've been to other countries and you find children from a very young age, they are being trained to love their country, to be proud of their country. When Alfred Mutua was the, 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 the spokesperson of the government, he came up with that, Najivunia kuam Kenya. Many Kenyans in the streets will say, Navumilia kuam Kenya. We need to examine that. Why is it that many Kenyans were saying that Navumilia kuam Kenya? I'm not proud, I'm just Persevering. I'm just surviving here in this country. So we need to ad address the underlying causes of this. Why is it that other countries, even neighboring countries, right. they are proud of their country, they are patriotic. So we need to re-examine our education system, our politics, and the negative ethnicity which is going to destroy this country unless we do something about it. All right. Mzee Gitu, you have seen uh, this country in its, in, the entire, in its entire history. From where you see it, uh, how can this nation cultivate back patriotism? One, we have elected uh, leaders in all our institutions. We have given them the resources to work out everything possible to unite the people of Kenya. One is that they aim to organize nationwide the way the people of Kenya can work together, they can eat together, they can live together, and they can do everything they do in their country together. Without that, we cannot expect peace in this country. The government must spend all the resources that can be provided for that purpose of loving the people of Kenya, bringing them together, let them work for the good of this country. Two, the resources of the country must be extended to all parts of the country. Because one of the problems that is coming when we have not represented ourselves is that there are parts of the country who are still crying. And we have a government for over 50 years. National resources must be extended to these people. Three. Engage the national dialogue for the purpose of uniting the people of Kenya. I have mentioned about the uh, president today. He speaks in the audiences that you come together, we help our people. If we help him to do so, then this country can come together and we can live together happily. 
dialogues is the mother of all the agreements the world over. Dialogues start from your own house. It extends to your tribe, it extends to your country, it extends to international. Much, Mr. Speaking, thank, yes, thank you so much, Mze Gitu Wakahengeri, for those very wise words and this very uh, important debate or discussion that we're having uh, of patriotism. And of course, you have seen a lot in this country in its entire history. Thank you so much, um, Zegitu Wakaengeri, a former freedom fighter who was served in parliament as well, uh, joining us live via the phone from Kiambu County. Let's now end up this conversation, but before we do that, we did ask you, what does it mean to you to be a patriot? Uh, let me sample a few uh, of your thoughts. Uh, Don Olang on Twitter says, patriotism is when everyone is treated equally with respect, and that makes me feel Kenyan. Right now, I cannot talk about patriotism. Uh, William Musioka says, Kenya has two caliber of citizens, the patriots and the parrots. The status quo favor, uh, favors the, pa the parrots, and the patriots are enemies of the status quo. That is Willie's uh, uh, opinion. And one here uh, from Brian Onyango says, patriotism starts with loving oneself, family, and neighbors. You cannot love your country, but hate things that make the country. And finally, one here, uh, CIA Coptel on Twitter says, in Kenya, there is no patriotism. We are refugees in our own country. How can I be a patriot and my rights have been denied? Just uh, some of your thoughts here. And as we wind up, uh, Dr. Kalua, um, the young people, the so-called millennials in this country have been on the receiving end of being accused of not knowing or understanding what patriotism, patriotism means. Uh, how can they learn and, and what lessons can they take and how can they take those lessons from the older generation, especially from the political class and all kinds of leaders in this country? This is an individual thing in my suggestion, uh, Ben. All right. And uh, it starts, you see, where do I stand? Where was I going? When you called me, I'm headed for a function for the Honorable Nyenze, a friend who has passed on, but I believe that's something that's adding value by my being here, and I choose to do that. Small things is what drive to the bigger issue. For as long as, as Kenyans, we sit in a vehicle that is veering off the road, and the police is being, uh, is being uh, given money in our presence, and we, it is okay with us to do these things, to break the law, and going against the justice and issues that are right, we still have a long way to go. So I suggest the individual position of our inner selves. I have been able to define what green is, and I've defined it very simply in three areas. One is treating people kindly. This is about good, uh, this is about values, this is about uh, treating people kindly and, and, and uh, having values in things that we do. Secondly, working towards good health, peace within communities, and creating sustainable livelihoods. And finally, the passionate environmental conservation. You can never arrive to the third issue. Tell a Kenyan to conserve environment, you'll be left alone. Show them how to make money, they will go in that direction running. And this is something that applies in everything that we do in life. What adds value to our individual self is what matters. Our economic uh, status, once we define it, it will help us to identify who is the leader that is going to give us jobs. Who is the leader that is going to put this country in the best way possible? Right. Who is the leader that is going to leave legacy in this country that surpasses and transcends all the, uh, all, all the time immemorial? So we need to start looking at ourselves, starting from a value system from the, from the schools, and be able to understand ourselves, then move to the next value. But justice, I think, is the beginning of this, and it starts with us respecting our institutions. Once we have that, then we start trusting each other right. and getting ourselves to the next, uh, the next value. Thank you, Dr. Sheikh. What are your final thoughts? Uh, I think as Kenyans, we need to put more emphasis on duties rather than rights. If each one of us would ask themselves, what duty do I owe this country? What duty do I owe my neighbor? What duty do I owe the heroes and heroines of this country? Then the rights will fall in place. Unfortunately, 
beginning from the leadership, who of course are the role models for our youth, we see a lot of emphasis on rights, rights, rights. Right. And of course, that is also dictated upon because of the greed that we have. So for me, if we go back to the Constitution, it talks about duties. We owe a duty to this country and our leaders should show by example. You know, when some, somebody can stand up in a public rally and talk, right. but for me as a Kenyan, when I look at him, I know it ends there. It's just rhetoric and nothing. We need now to put it into action and stop just being, uh, giving empty talk. All right. Thank you so much, gentlemen. We have been talking to Mze um, Gitu Wakahengeri on phone, of course, live from his village in the county of Kiambu, and uh, Professor Ibrahim Lithome, a lawyer and a man who has fought, uh, who has uh, contributed to the Kenyan Constitution 2010, and also, uh, um, and also uh, a sheikh. Thank you so much. And Daktari, uh, Dr. Isaac Kalua, CBS, congratulations, and thank you for joining us on this very important conversation. As we leave it on the big story tonight, it is a conversation that does not end in one sitting. The big question to you as a Kenyan is, are you a patriot? Thanks for watching. I'm Ben Kittily. <laughs>